Hello, I'm Robert Smitty Smith, and now I'm going to talk about designing for rigidity in automotive chassis and other similar structures. Now, in front of me, I have three little analogs I've created, and I've created them out of one half inch square pine, available in any lumber yard. It's all made out of the same half inch pine and the same amount of half inch pine. I was very careful to use exactly the same quantity linear inches between 235 and 238 inches in all three. So material quantity wise there is no difference. Material wise there is no difference. The joints there is no difference. The joints are simply wood glue together. No pins, no screws, no hinges. Simple glue joints. Now, I did that so we could compare the geometries of these three different basic chassis shapes. The first and most simplest, easiest to construct is called a ladder chassis. For obvious reasons, you have two side beams connected by cross members. This is exactly exactly what you will find on heavy-duty trucks. Take the cab off, strip away the tires and fenders, this is what's underneath. Two very robust beams. As you can see, this is three levels of half-inch squares laminated together. And then the cross members are two levels of half-inch laminated together. And it's all attached. This is exactly what you'll find in a Kenworth. It won't be quite as good as this because one of the cross members on an actual truck will be missing. Why? Because a great big diesel engine transmission has to sit in this bay. But for our purposes, it will suffice beautifully. So here we have the ladder chassis. Its main advantage is it is very strong and sabine. Torsional rigidity, uh, not so much. And that's what we're going to try to illustrate here. Now the next type is known as a box structure or a lot of uh, racing teams call these four tube designs. Basically it's four long tubes connected by cross members vertically and horizontally with diagonals on the end. Because guess what? Now you have a lot of room for driver, driver legs and feet and engine compartment. Here on the ladder frame, things have to, you have to remove a cross member, set them down in there, and then the suspension is bolted underneath the bottom of the rails. Over here, everything can be enclosed inside of a box structure, and suspension points can be taken off the sides. Lastly, we have a space frame. And I'm going to talk about what a space frame is and why this isn't a true space frame and this is. Yes, this is a frame. Yes, it encloses space, but it is not a space frame. Burn this into your little brains with a soldering iron. Try to get your students to understand that a space frame means that all the structural loads are carried in tension or compression not in bending. If it's in bending, it's not a true space frame. This frame, for example, if you put a load here in the middle, these long four tubes are going to bow. There's no diagonal members to turn this structure into triangles to put things in compression and tension. This one, of course, it's just all linear, so it absolutely is depending totally on its physicality here, just its bulk of the beams its size. So here we have three structures. Structure A, the ladder. Structure B, the box or four tube. Structure C, the space frame. They all have the same perimeter footprint. They're the same width, they're the same length, they're built out of the same material, the same amount of material. The only difference is in vertical because the basic design dictates the vertical. Okay. The thing that a structure has the most trouble with in an automotive application is torsional rigidity. Torsional rigidity 
If you put a load, notice all three of them are supported on three corners only. One, two, three. They have a dangling corner. One, two, three, dangling corner. I, here I've attached a beam with a spindle. And if we put pressure on that beam and spindle area, you can actually see the deflection. Now, to measure deflection, this is the same setup you use on a full-size car. Support it on three corners. Leave the fourth corner unsupported. This device is called a dial indicator. As it moves, the dial moves in one thousandths of an inch increments. You want to put the follower on the structure itself. Do not put it on the beam as the beam has its own flexure issues. So if we put a known force on our little spindle out here, it will cause a torsional deflection of this structure. So, these are easily set up, easily replicated, and they do something that our students really, really need. They need to see it, they need to touch it, they need to feel it, they need to understand it. Here I'm just draw, dropping two common nuts on the spindle I get a deflection. Now, if I move this over, which I'm not going to do face the time, I've already done that, and I've done it more than once to make sure that it's repeatable. If I put a two nut load on that beam, these beams are equal length, the spindles all have the same moment arm. Then if I put this many nuts on the box structure, I will get the same deflection. Five nuts, two nuts. So down here on the space frame, because it has diagonal members and is nothing but a series of triangles and pyramids, its structural rigidity is incredible. I've had students actually touch it right here after touching the deflection here on these others and utter expletives because they literally think it's a trick. It's not a trick, it's geometry. The lesson is structural rigidity comes from geometry. It doesn't necessarily come from the materials or the amount of materials. It comes from the geometry of the materials. And in race cars and in products for consumers, lighter is usually better. Why? Because you're using less materials. Materials, raw materials cost money. If you can get less material to carry a load and do the same job, the product should cost less. If the labor involved, manufacturing involved, is similar. I'm not done yet. I'm still stacking. Our textbooks sometimes don't do the best possible job in making this a concrete reality to students. They need to visualize it, see it, understand just what a, a tremendous geometric progression it is when you use geometry to get. Now, as we discussed before, strength and rigidity are not the same thing. We want rigidity in automobile structures so that we have wheels on all four corners. There you go. That many nuts to deflect a space frame, the same amount as five nuts deflects the box, two nuts deflect the ladder. If we say the simple ladder, the ladder's the easiest to build. If we say that it's 100%, its rigidity is 100%, then 
this is measures out to about 230 percent 230 250 1800 percent stiffer in torsional rigidity than the same amount of material on the same horizontal footprint used as a ladder versus used as a true space frame. Triangles are an engineer's best friend. Bye-bye.